people come and ask, is the water safe to drink? And it's, it's hard for me to say, but the hundreds of communities having the same problem with uh, contamination. We have third world conditions as it relates to drinking water. The vast majority of these systems that are providing undrinkable water are found here in the Central Valley. It's not a coincidence that they're found in low-income people of color communities. We have about 2,000 people in the array. We are a mostly Hispanic community, mostly farm workers. We've been having this drought for so long, and we've been blessed to have our wells maintain a certain level of water. Well, according to the experts, if you are exposed to drinking this water for a long period of time, you have the probabilities of getting cancer. What about if we boil it? I said, nope, it's not gonna do anything. Even showering is bad. We're overlooked by everybody, the county, the state. They don't account for a small community like ours. We are not being taken in consideration when it comes to policy making. We don't have anybody to be lobbying for us. We can barely manage to survive. So some of the conditions and characteristics that many public water systems here in California in rural communities are faced with a couple of them. One is um, they have old and dilapidated infrastructure that's delivering, in many cases, unpotable drinking water. From, from an array of contaminations, it can vary from arsenic, 1,2,3-DCP, which is an unregulated contaminant, to things like nitrates. Many times these systems are, not, are unable to bring in treatment that can be affordable for residents to have safe, clean, and affordable drinking water because they have to increase water rates. It becomes very expensive to divide the cost across a rural community of small, um, small connections. We're in the middle of dairy country. A lot of these people work, they're farm neighbors. Some of our contaminants that are out there are because of farming practices. And it doesn't mean that they're practicing that now because there's been a lot of chemicals that have been taken out. But it's just, you know, it takes time for that water to perk down to the ground. One, two, three, TCP was found in our waters in about 2012. It was used as a fumigant, and it was a byproduct of another uh, chemical. The companies were telling these farmers that it was good to use. And what happened is that this was going into our underground water in the 60s, 70s, and probably until the 80s, and it remains there. We are part of that group of uh, cities that are so in a shell and down because of this situation. The Central Valley is a thriving valley. We produce an array of crops and nuts and vegetables. Farm worker communities are also part of the fabric of the industry. That said, nitrates, arsenic, plague our drinking water. Agricultural practices contribute to nitrate pollution. We need to create sustainable solutions to ensure that we have winnable solutions both for the industry, but not at the expense of communities, and especially not at the expense of their health. We need to limit and prevent further con contamination of our drinking water sources. We need to upgrade dilapidated infrastructure so that we have good water running through updated pipes to people's homes. In addition to that, we need to make sure that we have the right capacity for these systems to actually understand what they're doing, and we need to ensure that residents who do serve on these water boards have the proper knowledge, expertise, resources, and funding to manage a system. Because at the end of the day, we're dealing with people's lives, and water is critically important to healthy environments and healthy bodies.